Glória a Jesus. Nós saudamos a igreja com a paz do Senhor. Em reverência à palavra do Senhor, eu convido aos irmãos a se colocarem de pé, aonde leremos em 1 Pedro, primeira epístola ou carta de Pedro, capítulo 5, a partir do versículo 6. 1 Pedro, capítulo 5, versículo 6 e diante. Assim nos diz a palavra de Deus. Humilhai-vos, pois, debaixo da potente mão de Deus, para que ao seu tempo vos exalte, lançando sobre ele toda a vossa ansiedade, porque ele tem cuidado de vós. Sede sóbrios, vigiai, porque o diabo, vosso adversário, anda em derredor, bramando como leão, buscando a quem possa tragar, a, ao qual resisti firmes na fé, sabendo que as mesmas aflições se cumprem entre os vossos irmãos no mundo. Senhor Deus, aplica a tua palavra em nossos corações, pois a ti oramos em nome do Senhor. Em nome de Jesus. Amém. Meus irmãos, be seated. My brothers. Um, we're going to go back all the way in Nehemiah. When Nehemiah, he had a a mission to do because God had um, touched his heart when um, he was in the fortress when he was there um, as in the fortress as one of the natives he was far away from, from his um, place he was far away from Jerusalem but even though he was far away his heart was close to the Lord right and when he receives this message that the walls were um, it was falling apart and the project of the Lord was disfigured. It was destroyed because Jerusalem was the project of God. But but the enemy uh, destroyed it. It burned. Because once someone burns something, it is for it is f to destroy all the everything that is in there. The proof. If there is no proof, there is no meaning. It's born. But the the project of God, uh, there was. But the project of God uh, was uh, safe in the heart of the Empire. But there. And there, the enemy could not enter. Because Nehemiah, he was a servant of the Lord. Even though he was far, even though in moments of anguish, when uh, he got the, the message, he, he was fully anguished. And one of his first actions, just like we read here, be sober. So the first action of Nehemiah was to humiliate himself upon the Lord. Right in the beginning of the chapter, 
saying that he humbled, he humbled himself upon the Lord. He put himself kneel down upon the Lord, confessed all his sins. He confessed. It says here, we sin upon you, even me, and the house of my father with sin. And the first thing that he did was to humiliate himself. It was to put himself upon the Lord as a sinner before to start that mission of reconstruct, to reconstruct, rebuild, to rebuild the walls. So put yourself on the strong hands of God. So, so in his time, he will exalt you. And the Lord exalted Nehemiah. Exalted him because before he humiliated himself. He didn't go uh, with an attitude. No. Even though the king of uh, uh, Suzanne had yeah, given, given him a letter so he could get whatever he wanted. And means not only uh, diplomatic, not diplomatic, but also uh, material. Because a letter from the king, he could, he could get whatever he wanted. But he went, and he he trusted in the Lord. He didn't trust only in the letter of the king. And that's that's his victory right there. He he went. He confessed himself upon the Lord. He humiliated himself, just like David. David, he, in his, his difficulties, when you're talking about David, many people think, oh, look, David in the, in the Bible had a great history. No, his only child betrayed him. His only child uh, conspired against him. But David, David uh, had a commitment with the Lord because the Lord said, David, David, follow me just like I have you in my heart. So David was also a sensitive man. He was a servant that when he sinned, when he would do something, mistakes, he didn't have the uh, attitude, attitude, but he had that. He was humbled. He would say, "Oh Lord, I sin." Just read the Psalms of David when he gets up on the Lord. Oh Lord, I sin upon you. I'm mistaken. But don't, don't cross my name. So. Humiliate yourself upon the Lord because the Lord will bless those who humiliate themselves. Not upon the man, not in front of the man, of a leader. No. Most of the times we see over there all oh, the people humiliate themselves. Or oh, just to try to guess something. No. But the church, the faithful church, is the one that humiliate upon the Lord. Because the Lord, He's the one that exalts the church. Lord, Father, in the name of the Lord. So, throw, um, so throwing upon Him all our um, anxiety. So, there are people that uh, walk with anxieties. And Jesus said, oh, don't walk in anxiety. Word with tomorrow. Just go day by day. Look. Look up. Look to the flowers. Just like uh, Solomon. With all his goods. He even lost himself. Look to the trees look to the look to the birds 
They don't even, they don't even so harvest. But the celestial god has never let anything, um, have never let anything happen. So, if, so there's not gonna be lack, not even for a bird. So how come it's gonna be for you? So David said, "I used to be young, but now I'm old. But I've never seen." I've never seen a servant of the Lord um, ask for a bread when he's hungry. No, uh, because the Lord will always give it. Just like Nehemiah went through um, uh, rebuilding the wall, Nehemiah's, they all got up. Says here that the enemy, he he walks just like a lion. He rolling just like a lion and seeking for a hole in the void. And Sabalai, the son of David, he went against him. He he tried to get him in a trap. Imagine. But David, he had a heart. I was grateful to the Lord. David in the Psalms, he said, Oh Lord, I'll thank you. I'll pray your name. Because I know how great you are and that's forever. So it didn't matter who he was serving. He was serving a God that was alive. A God that is not dead. A God that is not far away. There are moments of anguish, suffering, and sadness, illusions. Oh, why are we in this world? The enemy, he's, he's trying to make us uh, think the other way. But the word says that those who are inside of Jerusalem, uh, um, around them there's a wall, the walls. The enemy, he's ready to attack. So, be sober, be vigilant. This is a moment that we have to be vigilant. So watch out to be sober. Sober. In the time of the struggle. Right? But we have the Lord. The one, the uh, resisting faith, knowing that the same afflictions will grow and is happening between the brothers and brothers. It's here many times uh, we're saying, oh, Brazil, Brazil is a lot of struggle. No, there is also struggle over here in our world. We also say, we also say to our brothers in the world, that's why the church. The, the moment that we pray for the church yeah, that's why there's a moment that we pray for the the, the work of the Lord uh, around the world so there's going to be the little moment that we're going to be praying for those brothers in the work of the Lord because all world it is an affliction because it is a prophetic moment. It is a moment that anticipates the, the coming of the Lord. Oh Lord, look. In the, la the Lord says, in the last days there are going to be a father against son, son against father. There are going to be earthquakes, hunger, uh, disease. But this is what makes us scared. The other way around, this makes us stronger, and it makes us feel and remember that Jesus will come soon, because we leave the moment of soon, the time of soon, 
And it's a moment to reconstruct, rebuild. Just a reminder. So be under the strong hands of the Lord. The Lord, the Lord has never been saved and will never do. He's the Lord of today, tomorrow, and, and ever. The Lord never changes. I can change. You can maybe change. But the Lord can never change. So, just like it says here, resist Him. It's said fast in faith. Oh, I would like to open the Bible. Uh, First John. First John. Um, Five, First John five, it says, for uh, whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Amen. And who's our faith? Jesus. Jesus, He's the altar and and finisher of everything, of our faith. He won the world. Jesus said, I won the world, overcame the, the world, we are more than victorious in Christ Jesus, in Jesus Christ, so we are victorious, there are moments, yes, there are moments that we have to humiliate ourselves, how does the Lord, I sin, I'm, I'm saying, I'm sorry, I have to say, O oh Lord, exalt me, not for the glory of men, but for your glory. Because uh, David says in the Psalms, take from the mud, he took from the mud and put me on top of the rock. And in the end he says, and many will see. And will trust in the Lord. Uh, many will see the victories that the Lord uh, has given to the church. Many will see, and they will trust in the Lord. Uh, Look, I have. I'll go to church. I go to church. I go to church with that brother. That brother went through a struggle. He was humiliated. He went all the way to the bottom. Went all the way to the mud, but now I see him under the rock, over the rock, and I want to be at the same church as his brother. So this month we're going, we're leaving, and uh, we're praying for the um, friends at work. So let's be praying because the Lord will bless. Not only the speaking, but the way that we act, our actions. We need to give the example. The word there, many times empty, but the actions, it is everything. We came, he came, he left, he didn't say anything, but every, everybody saw it. So when. When of Saba, Shaba, he went there to see uh, Solomon. He said, "She said, Solomon, he's a he's a really wise man. Everything that he has is really perfect. That's why uh, she went there to see. So she left that place uh, amazed, not because of what Solomon said, not because of what his servants said, but she left that place amazed." For his actions, because of the way that she was uh, introduced. So when she got there in the church, uh, so just like you, maybe, um, just like my attitude, like if you go to church and they might say, "Oh wow, someone shook my hand." So let's sing a song right now.
Come by the Spirit of the Lord, and let's send up at this time. The Lord will give some gifts. Um, and first, the Lord will show a sister that will walk in this place. And it will see in her heart that was swollen. And it was in a point that it was about to explode. And we could understand it that that was because of the struggles that she was going through, the problems. And uh, you know, what has been uh, causing that? It is the fact that she cannot speak to anybody, open herself. And that's been uh, worse for her. She will only be quiet. But she, she has seen that those last days that's going over the limits and it's starting to affect her, uh, her health not only her sentimental but also her health so tonight the Lord uh, promised her that will give her uh, a relief but she needs to leave everything in the altar of the Lord so I, what it is you today to leave in the altar of the Lord it is you to speak with the Lord sometimes speaking with the husband you can speak to with the pastor you, can, can, you cannot because sometimes it will, um, it will be about the, the life of the pastor or the husband but you can talk to the Lord you can cry on the feet of the Lord and if you do so the Lord will give you the relief and you're going to be changing all that weight for the relief from the Lord that is really light. So it's right here the secret. So cry, just cry in the feet of the Lord. Don't let that get bigger and get worse because in a couple of days that's gonna explode. And then you're gonna have to go to the hospital. And it's easier for you just to cry in the feet of the Lord. Do this today, don't leave it for tomorrow. If you wanna ask for a prayer, we're gonna pray for you. But look, uh, get this done today because the Lord promised that today He's going to be giving you a relief. And the Lord also showed another woman that it was seen her house, that she was inside of her house. And the sister gave her a vision, uh, the Lord let her see that under the furniture, there was a lot of dust. That was a lot of dust for many days. And it's interesting that the, the Lord also let the sister see that this dust, the reason why the dust was on the furniture was that when she cleaned the por those pores that she could see in the house, she would throw everything under the, the furniture. So let's go. Uh, what does that mean? Spiritually talking. We're not praying here. The, the sister is not clean. The human part, this is not what you do. Uh, we're talking about it spiritually. If it, if it was a man, we might understand. But the sisters, uh, they know they know about cleaning, the professional. What the, what the Lord is saying, it's simple. All those things that are the mistakes from men, the sins. The Bible says that when you know how to do good, when you choose to do bad, you're seen. That's the same. And the Bible says those things that you plant, you're going to get it back later. So if you are giving uh, value, because when you don't throw away something, it's because you like that thing. It is because you're getting attached to that thing. And uh, the greatest mistake of that thing is because you get used to the sin. So what happens is, you come to the service, you know there is uh, the power and the blood of Jesus to forgive the sin of man. Any sin. Amen. Amen. Right? But if you don't uh, free yourself from the sin and you continue practicing this sin, you're throwing everything under the furniture and you are um, not, you're canceling the power of deliverance. You are, you're canceling what the Lord can do in your life. The blood has power. 
It doesn't matter what's or what you want. The Lord has power to deliver, cure, save men, uh, take a man out of uh, addiction, uh, depe um, chemical dependence. The Lord has the power to do that. But once you come back to leave the old life, once you come back to live in the sin, then you're choosing to cancel the action of the Lord. So don't do that. Escape from the parents of evil. Um, escape from, from the sin. What is escape from the sin? It is when you know that you're going to sin, and then you go for it. And you just go. With open arms. Open arms because of water. So the Lord is saying, don't do that. Don't throw the dust on your furniture. Because the Lord can see. Even even though the Lord um, So we have the knowledge So that's leaving the sin There's no way that we can escape from the sin But the practice of sin that we can The Lord can give us strength To say no to the sin Amen and The Lord was also showing a lot of vision That we will come here All of us with the candles in our hands and the candles represent what? The lamp that represents the heart of man. And the, some lamps, they were empty with the, not a lot of oil. Others put oil, just half of it. What caused their attention was many lamps um, were turned off. Lamps turned off, that is. Oh, what does it mean? It's operation of the Holy Spirit. Because when the the Holy Spirit operates in the life of man, the joy comes outside, right? It goes out. And the servant of the Lord, when he has the Holy Spirit on his hand, he's different. He doesn't uh, throw dust under the, under the furniture. He doesn't have his heart on a point to explode with anguish. No, because he's happy. He's full of joy. has peace. He trusts in the Lord. He waits in the Lord. But it's interesting that tonight the Lord was uh, calling every single one of us to come to the pulpit. And here we will receive the oil for those uh, who didn't have enough oil and the angel will come and light it up all the lamps my, uh, my brother, tonight is a night of renew tonight is a night for those who are here they're going to leave this place of relief what happens happens if there are dust uh, under, the, under the furniture the angel already went there and already cleaned the Lord already uh, del delivered but tonight you're going to leave this place with your lamp, with oil and fire. That's what's most important. So don't go back anymore. Don't cancel what the Lord has done for you today. Ask the Lord, Oh Lord, give me strength so I can resist. The Lord, my brother, if we don't live this, oh, let's just rip it off the Bible. Let's go and finish this. If it is to be on this thing right here, to come in a service. So, Lord, I believe, I trust. When it finishes right there, you go back and nothing happens. You're only throwing everything under the furniture. No, don't do that. Enjoy, because tonight the Lord already delivered you. How do you know that? You're going to talk to the Lord. I, I took... I take possession, but I don't sin. I don't. I don't say. I don't bring this. I don't bring that. I don't do this. I don't do that. But this is not only the sin to the Lord for you not to follow the things from the, the Lord. The sin it is when you can forgive your brother and you don't forgive. Your hand to the brother and you don't stand. That's the sin. For the share that the Lord has already testified in your heart, knowing the things that you've been doing, that you know, and that it's not making the Lord happy. The, Lord, the sin that is consent that you know, 
But Sam, when you know it kills men, it kills men. What it kills men, it is takes away the salvation from the men. So that's why the Lord already gave us this blessing, Sam. And tonight you're gonna leave this place um, strong, so you can resist a bad day. Amen. Let's have a word of glorification to the Lord. Oh Lord, we glorify your name and we want to thank you for your word that is revealed for us tonight. We want to talk to the Lord because your church is faithful. It has been humiliating himself all day. That's why your church is victorious. That's why we thank you. We want to thank you because you're wonderful. Holy, holy is you, Lord. We glorify you and we thank you for your name. We say amen. Amen. to God. Glory to God. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Glory to God. O Lord, that the song don't be only a song, a letter, but that it could be also a prayer. That it could come and all pray in our hearts that the service of tonight could be a teaching and we could take those uh, of all your word of your power your will teach us O Lord how to only do your will give us strength to resist everything give us strength for all those things that are not from our project so we can live in salvation in Lord. So we can, oh Lord, evangelize, talk about your name, give testimony upon your power, transformation, so we can be testimony in lives of your word. Take us in peace. We pray with you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In your name we say the, the holy grace of eternal Jesus Christ the love of God, our eternal Father, and eternal and sweet consolation of the Holy Spirit could be pouring upon us now forevermore. Amen. The, the brothers may be seated. Um, so we're going to have on Sunday, this Sunday, um, this Sunday um, in the morning, we're going to be again in the Church of Hollandale. Um, so it was going to be in the first uh, since, uh, Sunday of the month and the second Sunday of the month. 
So we're gonna be going to Hollandale. So we're not gonna be there at eight in the morning. We're gonna be there at nine uh, for the breakfast. So we're gonna uh, eat the breakfast from nine to nine thirty. There's gonna be a breakfast. All right. Those who guess there at nine o nine o one will not eat. Nine o one. I'm gonna tell the plastics to lock the gate. So from nine to nine thirty, um, we're gonna be eating the breakfast, and then after that we're gonna have our service. Uh, uh, a little, uh, little seminar. We probably have um, one or two classes, so we are not gonna be here um, Sunday morning. Um, Saturday night, Sunday night, we're gonna be here, but not in the morning. So, peace be with everyone.